There are several ways in which Leonardo's thought is, is important today. Uh, we cannot um, learn anything from him about actual scientific discoveries, except marvel at, at you know, his genius that he discovered those things so early, but they were all rediscovered. <clears throat> so there's nothing new scientifically in, in his writing from, from our point of view. But we can be inspired by several things. One is his systemic way of thinking, of interconnecting problems, and seeing how things are connected. That's very important for today. Another one is his profound respect of nature and, and his desire to imitate nature and learn from her in biomimicry, in eco-design. That would be a second one. Um, and a third one would be that uh, his science always went together with ethics. He, he had, you know, a very deep ethical uh, position. Uh, you know, his respect of nature, <coughs> when, uh, when you see uh, his writings and drawings, for example, in anatomy of, of animals, he considered the human body an animal body, as we do today in biology. And uh, animals to him were, if you wish, ontologically uh, completely equivalent to humans at, at the same level. He didn't see animals as a lower class, you know, uh, ethically, a lower class of, of living beings. He would, for instance, often say, uh, uh, humans and other animals, men and other animals, or we would talk about the human body as the animal body. So there was a very profound respect of uh, the nature of life in, in the animal body. He, he loved animals, that's why he was a vegetarian, and uh, he didn't want to harm animals, and he had a, a very deep respect of of life wherever it occurred. So these are all things that, that are very relevant to our time. In the 17th century, there was a very profound shift in Europe in people's uh, perception of nature from seeing nature as an organic whole um, with a spiritual dimension to seeing it as a machine. And uh, therefore, uh, seeing nature as a machine um, people thought that our proper attitude was to approach it with an engineering mentality. Uh, when you have a machine, it's important to be able to control it. And so uh, the idea arose that man could control nature. And, and that idea has had, you know, uh, very uh, tragic consequences because, you know, in the subsequent centuries, uh, we have destroyed a lot of nature and have lost our respect for nature. And that's still true today. And of course, now there is an ecology movement and an eco-design movement. And, and there are all kinds of movements counteracting that tendency. But a lot of damage has been done. Uh, we, we can and must bring back the, the, the spirit of uh, irreverence of nature. And we can do so within uh, today's ecology movement. There's actually a philosophical school known as Deep Ecology, which says exactly that, which says <clears throat> that a tree is valuable in itself uh, because it is a living being and as such has value. Uh, it's not only valuable to us because we can cut it down and use the, the, the wood to make furniture, but it's valuable as a living organism, as part of living nature. And, and that uh, value shift in deep ecology is uh, something that is very necessary to rekindle our, our reverence and respect of nature.